Hi, I'm Vic and welcome to Geeko Farm where we do things indifferently. The subject of my hire today is the induction hob. Now, I both love these things and I hate them. So what exactly are induction hobs and why do you care? Well, they're exactly the opposite of a microwave. You put something in the microwave and what it does is it warms up the food, not the container. What an induction hob does is it warms up the container. Now that may not sound very useful, but the induction hob itself doesn't warm up. That's a huge energy saving. It works a bit like a transformer. You know, things that convert voltages in the power station and sort of big bricks that hang off your uh, little laptops. Well, transformers are usually used to convert a voltage from one level to the other, but they do have another purpose. And what they can be used to do is to sort of concentrate the power into a place where you want it. Classic point being the archetypal aha arc welder. Power goes in here at the back goes to a transformer, comes out under control at the front. The transformer allowing you to put the power exactly where you want it. Now I'm going to be alright, uh, you're probably going to want to put these on. Yeah, that's better. Uh, you may recognise this trick from cutting aluminium foil with a car battery. We've just upped the ante a bit. Power where you want it, that's the key. Gas is best for cooking because when you turn the heat up or down, the power's temperature changes almost instantly. Ordinary electric hobs are a little more sluggish. Ceramic hobs are even more sluggish still because they have to heat up the right slab of ceramic underneath before they warm your pot. Induction hobs, because they only heat the pan, theoretically have better temperature control than gas However, in practice, they're either on or off, and spend most of their time switching between on and off. This causes temperature fluctuations, which are greater than that of gas, and, to be honest, slightly undesirable. There are two ways to control the temperature on an induction hob. You can either tell it to stay at a constant temperature, which, as you'll see in a minute, isn't terribly useful, or you can control the power output, much like turning the uh, dial on an ordinary gas cooker. I would rather cook with gas, but here in New Zealand electricity has a lower carbon footprint than gas, and so we reserve uh, the gas for our barbecue and camping. From a culinary and environmental perspective, induction is a great compromise, and it's good enough for me, but they have problems, and you should be aware of them. So let's take a look inside. There's a fan just here the electronics and it's which is on whenever the uh, element is in action um, and that brings us to problem number one the noise allow me to illustrate my point I turn the thing on and it beeps but I haven't actually turned it on I actually have to push this button to power it up another one uh, and then I have to select whether I want temperature at level or power level. And then I have to select the power level. With me so far. And it, it beeps on its own because it hasn't got anything on top. You get the point? While we're in here, this board here with all the switches and displays and so forth contains this little bugger, which is what makes all the noise. As none of these switches are a volume control or on-off switch, we will solve this problem simply by filling it with non-conductive hot glue. There's a temperature sensor here, which is pretty useless because it's attached to the glass with this uh, white silicone conductive goop. And so um, it measures the temperature of the glass, which is cooled by this fan. So don't use temperature control settings on these things. Just use the power level controls the temperature ones don't work. This is our transformer. Actually it's only half of the transformer. The other half is the bottom of the pan. 
Yes, that's right. It induces electric currents directly into the bottom of your pan, much like the transformer in our arc welder rig earlier. This is why it's called an induction hob. Don't worry though, the laws of physics say that the electricity stays right here in the pan, being turned into heat directly, hence the efficiency. But that brings us to the next problem. You need the right pan. Usually the right pans will say induction on the bottom somewhere, like this one does. But this one doesn't say anything and works quite well. What you want to avoid are things made of aluminium or with thin copper bottom. Those won't work. On the other hand, carbon steel wops, if you see those with a flat bottom, they work really well. And so does cast iron cookware. So your pan and transformer combo is driven by the electronics down here below. And they work well enough and they're perfectly safe in themselves. But where many induction hobs go wrong is in the user interface, where is the, there is this horrible fad for using touch switches. The problem with touch screens, as anyone who's ever had a cell phone get damp will tell you, is that once the screen gets wet, it doesn't work. Even worse, it can send false signals when it gets damp. Here's what happens when I wipe the controls with a wet cloth. But when the pan boils over, of course, you can't operate the on-off switch, and you have to reach over the boiling pan to the wall switch to turn the thing off. As with the foam, when the controls get wet, they don't work. And when they get spattered, they give false signals. Here's an example from last night. Okay, and here is why um, induction hobs with touch sensitive, like capacitive switches are dangerous. Um, the pan uh, is ever so slightly spitting at the edge here. The droplets are falling on the touch sensitive controls and adjusting the temperature. Now, how could this possibly go wrong? So while I think induction hops are great, I would not suggest getting one with touchscreen controls. Get one with clicky button controls like that. Um, in fact, I don't think ones with touch sensitive controls should even be allowed to be sold. Uh, other than that, they're really quite good. But for now, that's your lot. Damn Geeko Farm.